Adjunctive Techniques for the Assessment of Fetal Well-Being. This is the second part in lecture addressing the subject of adjunctive techniques. In the previous lecture, we discussed fetal scalp stimulation and the principles, technique, limitation, and evidence behind combined CTG and fetal ECG assessment. Fetal blood sampling. The principle of fetal blood sampling is to obtain a capillary blood sample from the fetus cap which would be assessed for pH and base excess or lactate levels. During this lecture we will be discussing the technique of performing a fetal blood sampling, the evidence, the interpretation of the results, the evidence behind safety and reliability of performing fetal blood sampling, and finally some of the complications that may occur from the procedure. The instruments used to perform fetal blood sampling usually come in a combined package. It usually contains a speculum, a light source, a special scalpel, sponge holding forceps and gauze, a tube containing Vaseline, some cotton swabs, and some capillary tubes. When preparing for fetal blood sampling, one would also need ethyl chloride spray. As any surgical procedure, we will start by discussing the positioning of the patient. The advice is to best avoid supine or lithotomy position because this can cause aortal cable compression, leading to hypoxia even if none already existed. The recommendation is to use the left lateral position. Because the procedure can take between 10 and 15 minutes to perform, it is always advised to support the patient's leg by putting it in the contralateral stirrup. And for ease of access, instruct the patient to have her buttocks closer to the side of the bed. The speculum is inserted, being directed initially posteriorly till reaching the level of the cervix. Then it is rotated forward to be applied on the fetal scalp. It is recommended that while putting the speculum in, to have the choker within the speculum as that would avoid the entrapment of maternal tissues within the speculum. Remove the trocar and fix the light source to ensure good visualization. Ensure that the speculum is applied to the fetal scalp and that no maternal tissue has been trapped under the edge of the speculum. It is important to maintain a tight seal against the fetal scalp to ensure that no lycor or any other fluids contaminate the sample. Clean the scalp using the gauze provided. Then spray ethyl chloride on the fetal scalp to cause a temporary vasoconstriction and ischemia, which will later be followed by hyperemia, which aids in obtaining the sample. Next, apply Vaseline on the fetal scalp. This will help the blood coming out of the incision to form a drop rather than flowing away. It is important to remember to maintain the seal between the speculum and the fetal scalp during the entire process of obtaining the fetal scalp blood sample. If contamination occurs, the fetal scalp will need to be cleaned again and Vaseline reapplied. Once the scalp hyperemia has started, use the provided scalpel to make a small stab incision on the fetal scalp. Once you have created the incision, Wait for the blood to collect into a droplet. Using the capillary tube, draw up the blood droplet and send it off for analysis. Apply pressure to the incision site to stop further bleeding. It is common practice to perform two samples out of the same incision to avoid having to repeat a sample if results are not obtained. If the results come back showing normal pH or normal lactate levels, 
The recommendation is to repeat the sample an hour later if an abnormal CTG continues. While if the results are within the borderline range, the sample should be repeated within 30 minutes. And the recommendation in the presence of abnormal results, delivery should be expedited. There is no available evidence of a correlation between fetal scalp pH and improvement in long-term outcomes, although there is some evidence showing that there may be a reduction in the rate of neonatal acidosis. There is evidence showing that in comparison to intermittent auscultation, continuous electronic fetal monitoring and fetal blood sampling increases further intervention rates, especially assisted vaginal delivery. The results may be influenced by contamination from amniotic fluid or meconium or in the presence of maternal infection or scalp edema. Studies have also shown that the pressure exerted by the amnioscope and the duration required for obtaining the sample can cause the sample to appear more acidotic, hence making the procedure unreliable. We have also seen that while performing fetal blood sampling, we deliberately cause fetal scalp ischemia by spraying ethyl chloride, which causes reflex vasoconstriction due to the cold effect of the evaporation of the spray. This is followed by hyperemia, which helps to obtain the blood sample. However, this also means that the results of the pH within the scalp capillaries would have been altered by the procedure of sampling. There is evidence suggesting that fetal blood sampling has a limited role in predicting fetal outcome in babies with intrauterine growth restriction. There is evidence questioning the reproducibility of fetal blood sampling results, with paired fetal blood samples being significantly different in 43% of cases, and even crossing the threshold for intervention in 16% of situations. We have seen that the sampling technique to obtain a sample of the fetal blood can take a fair amount of time. This time should be considered in the decision-making process. Research has shown that it takes an average of 17 to 18 minutes to obtain the results, and over 30 minutes in up to 9% of situations. There are case reports stating that fetal blood sampling may be associated with fetal hemorrhage, especially if the sampling is followed by a Vontuz delivery, which will draw more blood out of the incision made. It can cause scalp trauma, abscess formation. It is not uncommon to perform a fetal blood sample in a fetus with a deflexed head. The position of the fetal head makes the anterior fontanelle a structure first encountered when putting the speculum through the cervix. In reality, the diameter of the speculum is about 2.5 to 3 centimeters, which means although we would like to think that we try to avoid causing injury to fetal structures, reports have been made of dural puncture at the anterior fontanelle during the process of fetal blood sampling. There have also been reports of the breaking of parts of the scalpel while performing the fetal blood sampling. Contraindications to fetal blood sampling are very similar to those of ST analysis. It should not be initiated in the second stage or in precipitate labor. It should not be performed if there is a preterminal trace or in acute hypoxia. It should not be performed if there is suspected chorioamunitis. If there is active genital herpes infection, it is best avoided if there is risk of vertical transmission of infection to the fetus, or if there is suspected fetal blood disorders. We should definitely avoid performing a fetal blood sample if there is any uncertainty about the presenting part. It should not be performed when artificial rupture of membranes is inappropriate, or if expedited delivery is required for any other indication. As quoted within the National Institute of Clinical Excellence guideline, there is one observational study comparing combined continuous electronic fetal monitoring and fetal blood sampling to continuous electronic fetal monitoring alone. 
the study states that in vaginal deliveries with pathological fetal heart rate, the use of fetal blood sampling as an additional means of intrapartum fetal surveillance is associated with less vaginal operative deliveries and with a lower frequency of severe fetal acidosis and APGAR scores being less than 5 at 5 minutes of life. However, during their assessment of the strength of the evidence provided, it is mentioned that it is categorized as being low. It is important to stress that our group does not support the use of fetal blood sampling as a test of fetal well-being. Within our units, we have not been performing fetal blood sampling for many years, yet we have successfully achieved an improvement in neonatal outcomes by adopting the physiological approach in interpreting the CTG trace. There is no strong evidence supporting benefit from performing fetal blood sampling. Women counseled for fetal blood sampling must be informed of the risks involved and the questionable outcome of the results.